Hey, yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed. And like I always say, it's one life, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. So, man, this video right here, I've been sitting on this for quite some time. Because when I get this kind of content, you know, I want to make sure it's done right with a positive message, on a positive note. To convey a message to people that, man, what's going on nowadays and what you see nowadays, it's the truth. And I'm only reacting to the truth and I'm only speaking facts and gathering information to the best of my ability. I'm not here to glorify it. I'm not here to brag about it. You know, I've changed that mentality and I've changed the narrative of my channel. And uh, it just makes it difficult sometimes when I get stuff like this because, you know, this is, at the end of the day, I don't care who these people are. Whatever prison organization they belong to, what they represent or how bad they want to shut me down and how much they talk about me in the cell. Trust me, I hear it all the time. That they're talking about me in the cell. Trying to find out my real name. Keep going. But at the end of the day, even if they did a lot of wrong. Even if, you know, they had what they have coming. Even if karma came back around and bit them in the butt. You know, people are dying. And people are dying in the penal system. See, it wasn't talked about for a very long time. Because nobody really cared about the penal system. That's just what men do when they go to jail. But now that everybody's elaborating on it on YouTube and other social media platforms and broadcasting it for everybody, you know, I could easily be like, man, that's what you get. This is what happens whenever you want to mess around. But I just don't want to be that person. As much as I'm on this YouTube channel condemning their actions and condemning their ways of thinking and how they treat people and their whole organizational body on what they stand on, the, the, the end result is people are dying in jail. And they're killing off a lot of people just to end up dead themselves. So I did get the autopsy pictures of Fly from San Fed. And um, it's disgusting. Very disgusting. You know, because you know how when they cut open a body, I don't even know. Why, why, why do they do that? I don't get it. Like, all right, you know the dude died from stab wounds. So you're going to like cut it open. But why do you clean? I don't know, man. That's just, look, man, he's just stitched up from his stomach. And it goes into a V. He has the puncture wounds right here. I could not get the face. They wouldn't give me the face ones. On the basis that dude got hit in the face. So I don't. But you could tell a little bit. If you really look at the pictures you could tell. And um, so it's up in a V. You can see like right through. Like there's things missing in there. It's empty in there. That grossed me out. It really did. You see the puncture wounds where he got hit in the ribs. How deep they are. And um, even messed up his stomach tattoo. His San Fer tattoo. It's just like. Off, off, offset a little bit. So there's multiple pictures, and I look at them. And you know the first thing that came to my head? Somebody told me that uh, they had recently met Fly in New Folsom before, you know, this took place. And then this is a trip, right? Because the two people that blasted him are two dudes that he raised his hand for and made. Cisco, right here. And Beaver. I just thought about it because when the homie told me that these two dudes, that Fly raised his hand for both of them, brought them into the fold. Because Cisco actually blasted somebody for Fly. And that's what impressed Fly. Can't remember who the person he hit, but Fly needed him hit after so many years. I honestly know. I believe now I know who it was. Uh, it was one of the individuals that blasted Mino from La Puente. Back in like 2007, 2008. Actually landed in New Folsom. And uh, Fly had an issue with him. But the one thing he said about Fly. He said, look man. When he met Fly on orientation at New Folsom. They had a conversation. And the conversation eventually led to Fly saying this. He goes, look bro. To be honest with you. Everybody that's using my name out there. It's all lies bro. Nobody has talked to me and been in contact with me for years. And I was like. Well, I know I did a lot of videos on Fly, and a lot of people said they worked for him, they were doing this for them, he contacted this, he was in touch with this, he made this guy, he worked for this guy, he took over LA County Jail. He said, yeah. He goes, but Fly's biggest empire was when he landed in New Folsom because of the pipelines and the cell phone. He said, that's how Fly got rich. Fly was got rich because he was a businessman. And the reason why he took over LA County Jail 
It's because somebody that was in LA County Jail, they weren't acknowledging because he was out bad. He was in bad standings. He was a keep away. They had him on keep away, so he wasn't able to control LA County Jail. So Fly stepped in, took over LA County Jail, and then he gave a portion of it to Snuffy, the Mexican Mafia member from Paramount. Snuffy and Fly were the ones running LA County Jail, collecting at least fifteen to 20000 a month from that county jail. But it makes you wonder, right? You know, they blasted Fly because he got too greedy. Because he wasn't breaking off none of the Mexican Mafia members with the L.A. County Jail money. You know, his wife had everything. And he was making money in New Folsom. Even though he had a dirty tactic in New Folsom, the homie told me about. They blasted Fly over that. But you notice they never blasted uh, Snuffy over that? See, how are you going to blast one Mexican Mafia member because he made so much money? But there's another Mexican Mafia member who's in control of a fourth of Valley County Jail making the same amount of money because of what he was doing on the streets. Robbing other connects, robbing other Mexican Mafia members, Casitas, making it seem like it wasn't him. Blaming it on other people from the other side of the border. Or throwing other young soldiers on the bus that they did it on rogue. I'm going to have them blasted. I'm going to have them whacked. I'm going to have them killed. But they spared him. They gave Snuffy a pass. The commission gave Snuffy a pass. But they blasted Fly. But when everybody knows that Fly and Snuffy were working together in business cahoots with each other, they gave Snuffy a pass. But yet I can sit here and look at these uh, autopsy pictures and, and just tell myself, politics as usual. They'll blast one when they don't like you. They'll blast the other when you're doing something for them. It's so easy to give somebody a pass when the money lands on other people's books. But since Fly supposedly kept it all to himself and his wife... That was a legitimate reason to blast him. And look who took over the L.A. County Jail that fast, that quick. Because every story that I've ever told is the moment that these dudes die and their empire is up for grabs, it's taken over within a week. How could you possibly do that that fast from a cell, right? It's because they had it planned in the works for a very long time when the commission decided to say, you know what, we're going to blast Fly, but in the meantime, let's orchestrate it right so we could take all his territories in all his neighborhoods. And it was that easy. And it was that simple. The homie said when Fly was in New Folsom, he was bringing in dope. And at the time, Fernie from Dogpatch was there before he passed away. He said he passed away because he OD'd and they, uh, they had him on uh, anesthesia and they couldn't bring him out of it. So he passed away. And Fernie Selly was wet or smooth. So all they told him to do, Fly, Fernie, and wet or smooth was make sure we get our issue and we get our money. So he brought in. A lot of dope. And he blessed all three of them equally. He said equally. A couple grams, couple grams, couple grams. However much money they wanted. Usually it was like 500 a piece. Make me 500 a piece. And he'd go make the money. And then he'd go make his own money. And as long as he kept doing it, they were okay with that. As long as they got their dope every weekend, their 500, they were content. But when Fernie passed away, it left Fly and Weddle Smooth. So he tried to do the same thing. But he looked at it like, well... I ain't got to give this portion away because, you know, the big homie's dead. The padrino's dead. So I'll do the same thing. Couple grams, couple grams. Bam, bam. But nope. Fly threw his weight around. Where I already he seen he was making a lot of money and said, hey, you're going to bring my stuff in. I need my issue now. I want my issue. And demanded that he bring in Fly's dope. So the first time went cool. The second time it went ugly and Fly tried to tax him. How it went ugly? Because Fly's people dropped it off to him, but it wasn't wrapped. So he had to have his people wrap it up, bring it into Fly. And then Fly went on his phone, showed him what he got. And they were like, nah, he opened it. That's not how we sent it to him. Nah, he stole from you. That's not all, that's not all of it. And Fly made a big issue about it. Told him that he had to bring in twice the much and he couldn't bring none in for himself. Until he brought in twice the much and covered up his debt. So he seen that Fly was getting scandalous. But he said to stay in good graces with them. He didn't want to argue with them. So he figured out his own way. To make sure that this went according to plan. And that he can cover his debt. And continue to bring in dope. So he told his people. Hey. Same people are going to drop off. A little, a little bit more. A lot more should I say. And I'm going to bring it in. But we're not going to make nothing this time. Let's just get this out the way. He explained this whole situation to his family. And they were okay with it because they didn't want to see him get killed. So the moment that they met up at a hotel, 
before they were coming in for visit. Fly's people dropped it off, and he pulled out a phone and started recording it. Not him per se, his family. The moment they said they were going to hand it over, she pulled out the phone and was like, all right, and recorded how they put it on the table. And sent it to him, and he had it ready. So when he brought it in and handed it over to Fly, before Fly could say anything, he goes up to Fly's door and he shows him the phone. Here. That's how it was dropped off. And all Fly did was smile and says, damn, fool, you're getting better. You're getting smarter at this. He goes, we're done? And Fly said, yeah, we're done. But I still need my issue once you start bringing your stuff back in. So he had to take a 25 to life risk and risk his people. Penitentiary chances to satisfy this man because he got too greedy. And he said straight up, this is his personal opinion. I'm on. He's like, look, Fly made the most money while he was at New Folsom. Once he established that pipeline with the AB and how they were bringing it in. Once he got that phone and he got in contact with everybody in L.A. County Jail and started running things. He's all, that's when he made a lot of his money, the most of his money. So I know a lot of people do use Mexican Mafia members' names on the streets to get away with a lot, even when they don't even know what's going on on the streets. And half the time they get away with making calls on behalf of who they work for without the person they're working for knowing because these dudes were isolated for a very long time. Small communication. Their secretaries might have said, yeah, he said okay, but he really did it. So imagine all the things that these dudes get away with without knowing that they're getting away with it, without making the call. Most importantly, I'm looking at this autopsy picture and realize everybody that worked with him, were in businesses with him, got the pass because they were quick to favor the commission. But when he didn't, they blasted him. That's what this brotherhood looks like. Just money. And when you make too much money, you're going to go down for it. So what's the point of being a part of a brotherhood and since we all know their main priority is just taking over people's casitas. Man, I got so much stuff on Snuffy, it's ridiculous. But I just can't wrap my head around the concept that he was a businessman associated with another businessman. But they killed one, but gave the other dude a pass. So I asked myself, like, if you're going to hit one, you got to hit the other because they were doing the same thing at the same time in L.A. County Jail. But only one got the pass. And it makes you ask why. Don't know all the details yet. But at the end of the day, I know a lot of people are going to say, hey, Fly did a lot of wrong. Fly hurt a lot of people. But see, when I'm on the phone with everybody, you know, I can only share perspectives with people that have, like, a lot of details. That way I can give you guys good videos. But I have a big handful of people that said they work for Fly and told me all those Fly stories. And were like, man, he was an a-hole. He did this. He treated me like that. He did me dirty. He backstabbed me. Bad politics. But I always meet older homies or I talk to uh, some dudes that were from his neighborhood that knew him, grew up with them, were why with them. Like, man, dude wasn't really like that. And then I sit here and hear this man's story and he tells me, Fly literally said to him on orientation, like, fool, nobody kept in touch with me for years. So all those fools that are using my name for it, it's all, it's all been lies. That's how prison politics really work. So with that being said, like I always say, is one life, one chance. When we got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. Peace.